dream, you've got a dream. Make that dream come to life by working in the direction of your dream. say amen can we say amen again my God Woo! <laughs> praise the Lord he's an awesome God glory to God I want to extend a real special word of thanks to your praise team didn't they bless your heart if they bless your heart, you ought to give God some praise. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Giving honor to your pastor, my good friend for many years, and also to the leaders here who worked with him, in particular Dr. Goff, who is a man of excellence. I've watched him and where he carries himself. Realize that he's a special man. Let's, let's have some praise to God for Dr. Goff. <laughs> and, and, and he's always dressed just right. I appreciate that. And I want to thank the Lord for being here at this beautiful edifice. I... I remember being in this area as I pastored at Solid Rock and watching the construction and the progress. And uh, coming here, even going to the bathroom, I didn't want to go home. <laughs> so I say to God, be the glory. Now you have a, an outstanding minister to take you through. A man that I've known for many years and uh, a man that I have seen in school, uh, in the ministry, and I've learned a lot from him. And I appreciate the way that he handles the ministry. He wants to make sure that the people are well fed. And so I appreciate that. It's my privilege to be here and also to have my wife accompanying me, Michelle. Uh, I, uh, sometimes I'm not able to go to a particular church. They might invite me and then I tell, I send Michelle. And I remember on one occasion, Michelle showed up at the church and said, well, where is Pastor Q? She said, I, you don't need him. I'm here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but they were very, very disappointed. But after Michelle spoke, they said, who needs Pastor Q? <laughs> so I thank the Lord for a God-fearing wife, uh, a woman of character, a uh, uh, consummate first lady. I appreciate her so much, and uh, I just thank the Lord for her, thank the Lord for this great ministry for Northeastern Conference, but enough of myself, my wife, this ministry, I want to take a minute to talk about your pastor. I'm going to tell you about the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> no, really, your pastor is a very special friend of mine, and I have worked with him uh, ever since Oakwood College. And uh, I remember at Oakwood College, I was an 
uh, officer in the theological forum. This was where the student ministers would have a chance to conduct services and practice their preaching. Every Friday night, we would have a chance to uh, uh, call the student body together and just have a good time in the Lord. Uh, but the form did not take, o take off till Pastor Jules took over. Uh, I remember, you know, we used to have a good time. A few folk would come together and we'd preach and so on, but it was very low-key. But when Pastor Jules took over, he took it to a whole nother level. I'm not even kidding. I mean, he brought in E.E. E. Cleveland. He brought in Calvin Rock. I mean, you know, these guys were already in the area, but, uh, you know, a lot of folk weren't accustomed to have people of this caliber speaking for the students in a forum like this. But, you know, Pastor Jules would look for the best. And, uh, I mean, he, he brought them in, and, and the forum started to be packed. Uh, the, when you, he, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was Pastor Jules, but we even developed a special outfit where we had an insignia on the front of our blazer. And so the, 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 the forum started to take on some notoriety when Pastor Jules took over. Uh, you see, Pastor Jules loves challenge. He's a man of challenge, and it seems as though he revels in moving things to another level. He is a man that embraces challenge. My call for us today is to follow the example of your pastor and embrace challenge. Embrace those things that may seem difficult, but God is a God of challenge. Hello, somebody. Now, I don't want to song highfalutin today, but I want, to, I'm going to, I want to take your pure minds and conduct, and conduct a paradigm shift, a changing of the way we look at things. Are you with me? Not going to be your regular uh, health and temperance sermon. But I want, by this sermon, to affect the way you look at the message of health and temperance. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. And we're going we're gonna to take a minute. And I want you to stand with me. You've been sitting for a little while. I wish, I wish, I wish that praise team would come and just sing, a, sing that chorus. My God is awesome. We're just going to give God some praise, and then I'll have a word of praise. Is that all right? Praise His Holy Name. Just sing a chorus from that, if you will. I would, I would so appreciate that. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Do you believe that? Oh, praise His Holy Name. Just let's join with them as they sing to the glory of God.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we invite your presence into this place. We know that indeed you are an awesome God. You reign from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God whoo, is an awesome God. So we say hallelujah. We say thank you. We say glory to God. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God we serve. And as we come to you today, we invite the presence and power of your Holy Spirit into this place. We pray that you will take our mind off the earthly things. Lift us, lift us up into heavenly places. And may we see Jesus. And teach us to embrace challenge. In Jesus' name, let somebody say amen, amen, and amen. Be seated at this time. Touch someone and say, embrace challenge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just so happy to be here. And I've seen already so many folk that I've known while I worked in Queens and throughout Brooklyn. Uh, I've been upstate now for quite a while, and so I've become a countryman. I'm not accustomed to all this traffic. As a matter of fact, I let my wife do the driving. But I do want to take your mind to a passage in the Bible that talks about my good friend, Paul. And in this passage, we see that Paul was ministering in the course of his ministry, he comes across an individual who was into sorcery. Uh, I want to let you know that we are living in times when the powers of darkness are at their height, if you will. We're living in a time when it seems as though the devil is having his day. And so it was with Paul. If you look at uh, the book of Acts chapter 13, reading from verse 4, and we will go as quickly as possible, but I do want you to catch the picture, if you will. Uh, can you stay with me for a few minutes? Acts chapter 13, reading from verse 4, then it says, So there began, Acts 13, verse 4, I hope you brought your Bible with you, your iPad, your phone, whatever you use, but look at the Word of God, amen? amen. It says now, uh, So there being set forth, verse 4, by the Holy Ghost departed unto Cilicia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. When they were at uh, Salamis there preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, and they had also John their minister. And when they had gone through the, the isle unto Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, if you will, a Jew. Imagine this, a Jew false prophet. Almost said a Seventh-day Adventist, but let me leave that alone. Whose, <laughs> whose name was Bar-Jesus, and which was with the deputy, verse 7, of the country, Saragus Paulus, a, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. You see, this false prophet, this, this soothsayer, this witch doctor, if you will, was the personal spiritual advisor to this great leader. And when he saw that this man, Paul, would break his influence, he rose up against Paul. And in verse 8, it says here, But Elamus the sorcerer, for so is his name interpret, uh, by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul... Filled with the Holy Ghost, 
set his eyes on him. And I want to pause here for a minute and speak to our fathers. I want to say to the men of the church, as we consider that we are going to be celebrating fathers, they're the greatest, the greatest uh, uh, characteristic of a man is a man who has, who is filled with the Holy Ghost. What makes you the head of the house is not because you bring a check home. Come on and say amen, somebody. But what makes you the head of the house is that you are first a priest. And when you function in the context of your, pre or of your priestly responsibilities, God will add everything else onto you. He's going to give you riches, and he's going, to, he's going to bless your home. He'll bless your going out, and you're coming in. And so I want to say to the fathers and the men of the church, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things, come on, church. I said all these things will be added unto you. Come on and say amen. amen. So, so this man, Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, fixed his, his eyes on this witch doctor, this soothsayer, this obia man. <laughs> and said, oh, full of all subtilities and all mischief. Huh? Full of subtilities, full of mischief. Thou, whoo, thou child of the devil. Boy, this boy Paul wasn't playing games. The, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert right viz of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. You see, Paul, if Paul rebuke you, something's going to happen. And thou shalt be blind. He struck him with blindness for a season. So I want you to see this is a very dramatic situation happening here. I think this was Paul's first missionary journey. And poor uh, John Mark... You know, this is his first experience in this manner with Paul. And here he was in a very intense situation. Where the, the, where the, the soothsayer comes against Paul. Where the rich doctor stands against this man of God. It's intense. And these two titans clash. The power of darkness against the powers of the living God. But if if let God be God and every man a liar. Doesn't matter how the forces of darkness against, uh, uh, comes against you. One with God is a majority. Come on and say amen. Paul always ready for a challenge. Huh? Paul always ready for a challenge. Stood up and rebuked that man in the name of Jesus. John Mark, now imagine John Mark, a young man. A young man coming into the ministry. I remember when I first started coming into the ministry. And I remember one day, E.C. Ward looked at me and he said, Well, Pastor Q, can you, can you do a prayer for us? At prayer meeting. Brothers and sisters, I was so enamored by the privilege of speaking in Oakwood College Church. I was sweating bullets. And so I know the, the tension that would, can fall upon a young preacher. And to be put in this intense situation, encountering sorcery and, and, and rebuking that leads to blindness. And then Paul was ready to go on to face the Jews face to face. It was intense. Sailing for long miles. Uh, being uh, confronted, being withstood, and, and witnessing this 
this clash of powers and then to, to, to have the prospect of moving on from there and dealing face to face with Jews who are hostile, angry, and some very wicked. Hmm. So you can imagine uh, Timothy's trepidation. He said, this man Paul is crazy. This brother is too intense for me. Uh, I better get out of here while I still can go. <laughs> I better step aside. And in verse 30, it says, Now when Paul and his companions loosed from pa pa Pepos, they came to Pergamum in Pamphylia, and John departed, turned back, went home to Jerusalem. <laughs> Can't take no more. This guy is just too intense. Are you with me? His next move was going to be just as intense. And so he said, I better go while the going is good. But listen to me. Mark realized that Paul was the kind of man who reveled in challenges. Are you with me? He would never back down. He would never back up. He would never back away. He not only dealt with Challenges, he looked for them. Hello, somebody. We live in a world where folk are always looking for the easy road. Huh? I remember when I went to Oakwood College, I would walk around all day during uh, uh, registration, looking to see, finding out from the folk, researching diligently who was the easiest professors. <laughs> Making sure that I didn't encounter anything too difficult. But praise God, I realized that challenge will uplift you. Paul was a man who embraced challenge. And his resume, his resume uh, uh, indicates this by the list of his battle scars. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians, if you will. 2 Corinthians, reading from... Uh, chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we will take a look at the battle scars of Paul. Here's what it says. This is what it says. And are there ministers of Christ? I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes, uh, above measure, in prison, more frequent in death often of the Jews, five times. Times, how many did I say? Five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Brothers and sisters, one of those whippings was enough to kill a weak man. Five times, but then it goes on uh, uh, three times was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. That's intense. Beaten with rods, stoned. Listen to me, he, he's not finished yet. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. How is, how is Mark going to handle something like that? In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by night. By mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. I'm telling you, that's, that's a deep resume. I don't know if I can hang with a brother like that. Are you with me? Intense, but God is looking for people who will embrace challenge. This man, Paul, embraced challenge. That's why he said in Philippians chapter 3, forgetting those things which lay behind, come on church, and reaching forward towards the things which lay ahead, I press forward towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Somebody ought to say amen. He was a, he was a man who challenged himself. 
Because the Bible, you see, the Christian walk is a challenging walk. Hello, somebody. It's not all rolling downhill. It's not all swimming with the tide. If you're going to be a Christian, you're going to have some backbone. Too many of us have substituted our backbone for a wishbone. Hello, somebody. The word of God says straight is the way, narrow the path. Because higher than the highest human thought can reach, come on somebody, is God's ideal for his children. Paul had a different mindset. He realized that the joy was not just in the arrival, but it was in the journey. Come on and say amen, somebody. The joy was not just in reaching the peak. It was in the climb. The joy was not just in the accomplishment, somebody. It was in the struggle. <laughs> the joy was not just in the find, but in the search. It was not just in the conquest, but in the challenge. You see... If you take pleasure in the run, hello somebody, you will always be a winner. Some people are only happy when they get first at the finish line, but when you enjoy the run, huh, you're always going to be happy. Come on and say amen. We can rejoice because Obstacles and problems and challenges are stepping stones to a brighter future. That's why that old song, and I guess I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself now, it says, As you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on through the rain. Walk on through the wind. Though your dreams lay tossed and torn. Walk on. Walk on with hope in your heart. And you will never, never, never walk alone. You will never walk alone. Come on and say amen, somebody. God has called us to be men and women of character. Whatever happened to the folk who used to talk about character? I hope you, you, you listen to me, church. And I'm not preaching something that I have reached, but I'm preaching something that the Spirit has put on my heart, and I'm struggling to work with it because I don't like trouble. I like the way to be easy. I like to be able to say, if Jesus in the vessel, smile at the storm. Come on and say amen. John Mark had not yet ascended to this mindset. But praise God, he later embraced challenge and became a great warrior for God. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm not, I'm not really a preacher from a manuscript, but the Lord was giving me this stuff, and I just had to write it down, write it down by heart. Couldn't even take time to have it typed up. Listen to me, church, because... It is something that really needs to be said in the church. Yes, challenges. What word did I say? I don't hear you. What word did I say? Challenges are harbingers of good fortune. Woo. Problems are stepping.